Zidon Danny, Electro Ninja here, and welcome back to Nerd Chat here on Electro Ninja's Lab. And today we have Jack. Just Jack, just me. Yep. So yeah, uh, uh, as you can see, we have our new background. It is Christmas themed. Uh, yes, we have been gone for a few weeks. Um, chaos happened. That's just the way things go. Life happened, really. Yeah, that's that's true. And we just haven't been able to record it uh, for the past few times. Um, but yeah, uh, over the next few weeks, though, we will probably be doing more nerd chat, uh, more nerd chats, especially. Maybe we even will do some uh, nerds playing games with uh, freaking Pokemon coming out. Yes, the DLC. I'm so excited for the DLC. Absolutely. Like I really do feel like we're entering Kieran's villain era, and I'm just I'm here for it. As much as I don't like Kieran, and I don't really like his sister. Uh, I always wasn't well, going to prefer Nomi, but at the same time, I do feel like there was a lot of buildup for that, and that there's a lot of, if they don't, if it ends up falling flat, I'm going to be disappointed, and that's just, you know, what it is. Yeah, that's fair, and honestly, I'm excited to see exactly what they're going to do with all of it, because it's just like, there's so much that could happen. It's it's going to be fun, to say the least. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see exactly what they do. Um so yeah, uh, so obviously this upcoming week is going to be, uh, I, I would like to discuss the Game Awards a little bit, because obviously by that mm -hmm. time that it's going to have happened, um, and just like go over like games and maybe we could, uh, maybe we could just talk about a whole bunch of just, just what happened this year. That could be our, uh, yeah. well, obviously we're going to be doing the, um, a few other things later on in the year, uh, uh as we get closer to the end of the year reflecting on the year but um we'll see how that goes um so but yeah obviously the game awards is like right around the corner yeah so <laughs> i think we're gonna see a lot of mario and a lot of baldur's gate absolutely freaking lootly we are so yeah like considering the fact that i think baldur's gate at this point in time has the most spots. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that across all the different games, absolutely Baldur's Gate is winning one or uh, is winning a quite a few, I'm pretty sure. Um but exactly which ones it's going to win, I don't know. Um as for game of the year though, I think that's the big one that we should probably uh, that I kind of want to discuss because obviously remind me what's up for game of the year. So, uh, obviously there are a few that we don't really know too much about because we're not really horror fans with Alan Wake two and resident evil four. Okay. Um, but then there's Baldur's gate three, Spider-Man two, super Mario bros wonder and Zelda. So I, I could definitely see, um, especially Zelda winning. I definitely can see Zelda winning, especially because Tears of the Kingdom, as much as it it was, you know, it really could have been DLC. I think that it the idea like it's just really cool, and I think the the new mechanics they put in there where you can build stuff and use it as whatever is really cool. I think you know, yeah. Instead of instead of just rehashing the same general r Zelda runes that we've always had, the bomb, the magnesis, the whatever, you know, adding those new ones in is really quite cool. Yeah. So I think that it uh, it definitely has a chance of winning. And, Grant, you haven't played it yet, so... I have not, but I have watched gameplay on YouTube. Fair enough. Um, and I've watched you play it, and... Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Um... So, I don't really. See... Yeah, I don't know how everything works, but I yeah. I know that the animation is good, yeah. As, as we usually see in, as we've seen since twenty seventeen with Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I don't really see Spider Man two winning. Like I know that's kind of a, what? <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, I don't know. Like I think the main reason it's here is just because it's Marvel. Right. And to me, what it what that looks like is, um one of those games that has it has a large audience but that large audience is really only the audience because they like spider-man in general they would also they would play the game just as much if it was lego spider-man 
than if it was regular Spider-Man, because they like Spider-Man. It's not yeah. about the game, it's about the character. And I think that that it doesn't really constitute for me a game of the year if the focus isn't the gameplay, it's the character. Yeah. And honestly, it, well, it's a really... As good as a game of it might be... It's a really well-made yeah. game, and a good game, but the problem is that it... It also had a lot of people who were just saying that it's... It's okay, it's just... They would, uh, like, they, uh, a lot more people, uh, it's kind of shocking because a lot of people would just rather play the first Spider-Man at this point. Yeah. <clears throat> um, people still don't, uh, like, people still do not have the PS5 yet. And I think that's telling that, um, I believe that Spider-Man 2 is the only one of these games that is only on the PS5. Yeah. Because I don't, I think that Alan Wake is probably on the PC, it's probably on other systems as well. Um, mm -hmm. Resident Evil 4, that's probably on everything. Um, obviously, Mario and Zelda are both on uh, the Switch. And then Baldur's Gate, again, on everything. Mm -hmm. But, uh, um, so, a lot of, uh, so the other games really have a lot more options of people playing on them, while Spider-Man has, like, probably the least amount of options at this point. Yeah. I think it might be on Xbox. It might be on the Xbox series. But I don't remember. I think it was PS5 exclusive. It might be because Insomniac, uh, well, I don't know because Insomniac isn't, uh, is, I think they're everywhere now. I don't know. Spider-Man yeah, 2. Let's see if that. Uh, so, uh, okay, it is a PS5 exclusive. So, uh, yeah. So that's, like, the, uh, so, I think that's just telling to see, like, that's the only one that is an exclusive. I think maybe Baldur's Gate th uh, 3 might be on the PC only, but I don't think that's true. I just know because, uh, that it's on the PC because I, I've bought it already, and... Yeah. The Perky Hode, and... <clears throat> And we played it on his channel. You guys can go watch that video. It's It was actually kind of funny. It, it's kind of telling because, like, the majority of our game, uh, of our playing that was just in the character creator. Because it's just, it's so freaking big. And we could have, uh, I think, honestly, we could have spent several hours just in the character creator if we really wanted to. Oh, yeah. So, um... Like he had some things that he ha uh, that he said about it, and that it w uh, he didn't really like it as much. But at the same time, it's like it's massive compared uh, compared to like other ones. So I don't know, um, but it's also just like uh, like afterwards we uh, um, we were talking, and apparently there's a channel selector. <laughs> like uh, for mm. the uh, for the video, we just had it be um, uh, we had it uh. Uh, we didn't put section. Uh, we kept nudity off because YouTube. Um, but yeah, there is a genital thing, and it's just like, what the? F <laughs> yep. It is very rated M. Probably should have been rated A. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, just the aspect of Baldur's Gate that you can fuck a bear is just. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I think that it, it absolutely could win quite a few... Uh, Baldur's Gate, I think, is going to win a lot of things. Um, oh, I see it winning many, many, many awards, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's in... Uh, so, obviously, it's in Game of the Year. It's in Best Game Direction. It's in Best Narrative. I personally would like, it, uh, like 16 to win that, but I don't think that it will. Um, just... Yeah. yeah. Um... It is not in best art direction, but it is in best score in music. It is in what else is it in? It's in best community support. Um, it's not going to win best community support because that's uh, that it's going up against No Man's Sky. Um, let Let's be honest, nothing is beating No Man's Sky <laughs> when it comes to community support. Yeah. Uh, and I think that might be it. Oh, uh, yep. That's, I think that's it. Oh, no, best RPG. It's in best RPG. Um, 
I would I would like to see if um, Lies of P will win some of the uh, the awards that it's nominated for. Yeah, I I think I'd like to do more research on Lies of P. Yeah, and because I hadn't even heard of it. Yeah, it's a Pinocchio until, game. Yeah, I hadn't even heard of it until you brought it up in this conversation. Yeah. So, and you know how I feel about Disney things and Pinocchio. I mean, it's not it's not Disney. It's not, but. Disney, yeah. you know, brought it to the to the limelight, so to speak, and I really quite like Pinocchio. Yeah. As a concept, because you know the whole not lying thing. Yeah. I can get behind that, you know. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. So it is. Uh, so uh, while uh, I just decided to look it up, Lies of P is on the PlayStation. The um, uh, on both PlayStation Four and Five, it is on <laughs> um, PC, and then the Xbox. Both one and the series. Oh, of course, not the Switch. Yeah, it's uh, well, I mean, it's very high def, so that makes sense. I have an OLED. <laughs> and <laughs> the OLED is nowhere the OLED? isn't uh, like the OLED is maybe like a uh, somewhere between the four and the um, uh, uh, and uh, the PS3. I know, but like, still, it's not terrible. It's not. But However, yeah. I will say, Joker and I were discussing what we want from the next Pokemon game, and one of the things that I think is going to be really helpful is that if they wait until 2025, do a big, you know, 30th anniversary, <clears throat> you know, all right, 30th anniversary, and not only are we, you know, releasing... Gen 10. You know, whatever they... Oh yeah, not only are we, but I'm saying not only are we releasing, you know, whatever they're going to re-release, you know, maybe they re-release the originals or something, or something, but the Gen 10, it has to be something that they worked on, and we were discussing, we said that we would like the Arceus catching mechanism with uh, a combo of the Arceus and typical decks, but the open world from Scarlet and Violet. Yeah. I mean, at this point in time, I would say most likely what is going to happen over the next few years. So, 2024, we are probably going to be getting Legends, uh, whether, whether that be Legends Unova or Legends uh, Johto. It's going to be one of those mm -hmm. two. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, that that is the most likely next game. And I think that 2024 is a reasonable assumption to, for when that's going to release. After that, I think that we are, uh, in 2025, we are going to get Gen 10. Yeah. Because, yeah. Speaking of which, I do have to say, it's hilarious that, um, I made freaking um, uh, 25 Days of Nerdy Christmas, and in that I said nine generations for Pokemon, and we're just now getting to that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, Which is true. I, I knew that it was going to happen before long, but I think... Did I release that in Gen 7? Or did that... Was that Gen 8? It might have been Gen 8. I think well, it was 8. Yeah, because it was in 2018. Yeah. So it was Sword and Shield. But that was that was funny. Yeah. Like, obviously, I, I, I did that because of the fact that I was still... Need, I needed some a good spot for it. But, yeah. Yeah. But I also think it's funny that Gen 9 was really... Uh, it felt like a completely different universe compared to, like, the rest of Pokemon. I don't know. It didn't... It felt like... The star of something it new? Felt like what, it felt like what would... Ho what, this could be the star of, of something, something new. new. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You can't put millennials in a statement and make a song that's in High School Musical and expect us not to sing it. <laughs> okay, so what I was saying, <laughs> I feel like what it was was them trying to be less like everything is, oh, it's Team Plasma trying to blow up the universe because of Cosmog and, like, all of that. They were more like, no, they, the focus was real people, real things that happen to real people that real kids can relate to. Yeah. And I thought that was really, really cool, because not every kid is going to relate, you know, to saving the world. Yeah. But every kid is going to relate to being bullied. Absolutely. And it was, 
it was such a breath of fresh uh, of fresh air because like even Gen Eight still uh, like the evil team there was not the actual bad guys. It was all no. uh, it was Chairman Ross, but. Mm-hmm. So I think like that was the first step in the right direction, but they hadn't done it quite right yet. Right. So I don't know. It, it's interesting to think about like what... you can see a you can see a pretty clear timeline yeah. for how they've gone about this way that they're they're changing the story. Yep. As the teams get less and less dark. Yeah. But also another thing that I'm starting to see is more and more of a divide because a lot uh like more pokemon fans i'm seeing are saying things like i want uh they keep saying i want a a a rival that is a dick to me an asshole i want to have that type of rival again and it's just like why do you want that literally what do you get out of that like what what is the purpose of that because i sat there and like Okay, I can get behind the rival pushing you harder and being like, I'm going to be the best, and ha 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 ha. But they had already moved away from that so long ago Yeah. that most of the kids who've played since, gosh, I'd say black and white, honestly. Most of the kids who played have never had a, a rival who have been rude to them. Yeah. And secondly, and I think most importantly is that kids already deal with enough bullshit on a daily basis. So why would we put that into a video game that's going to be that? Instead, give them a rival who's going to push them and and also, you know, not be a dick. And one of the things I really, 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 really enjoyed about Scarlet and Violet was that of the three people who you're technically rivals with in some sort of way, um, they all have really important stories that if you, like, listen to them and pay attention to them, they're all they all have a really interesting arc. Exactly. For how that they've developed as characters. They're not just flat characters. Like, how and Hop, oh my gosh, they're so annoying. How was one thing, right? How, when he first came about in Alola, it was all right. It was whatever. He's an island boy. He's, um, he's laid back. He runs on island time. Okay, that's fine. He is what he is, and he fit right in with the Alola concept, right? Exactly. Yeah. Island. He made sense. But then... Pokemon, for whatever reason, and I think this is really stupid and quite lazy, actually, on their part, is they took the exact same animation from How, gave it a little bit of a new outfit, pants this time instead of shorts, congrats, you're now in Britain, not a lot, not um, Hawaii, and called him Hop. Yeah. And I just, it, you didn't, you didn't even barely change his name! Yeah, that that and I do then, have to admit that's really weird. To take the entirety of this character who made sense in context, and then put him into fucking the United Kingdom, like that doesn't make any goddamn sense. Yeah. Like literally nothing about Hop being just how spelled differently is that didn't make any sense, and he was annoying. Yeah. All the time. Everything he did was annoying. His stupid faces he made, his stupid animations he had, all of it. Annoying. I mean fair. And then his whole and then the, the whole thing that they had there where because they were in the UK or based off of the UK, they were gonna use UK slang. The amount of children and people really who commented that um <clears throat> At one point, Hop is talking to Leon and says, Ah, oh, your pants at directions. That is British slang. No American child in the world is going to understand what the fuck that means. Yeah, that's fair. I was like, okay, Japan, I, I know that we don't know much about your language, and I know that we don't know much about your culture, but for the love of fuck, please understand that slang is not the same just because of the same technical language. <laughs> yeah, th- that's that was weird. What's up, Google? What's up? Do you need to go outside? Your dog needs to go out. She does, but I'm just gonna take you with me. So fair enough. Uh, we're gonna go on a slight adventure. But yeah, a wee adventure. Like, I do have to. Uh, I I would say that I do actually like Hop um a little bit, but that might also be because it's in. I played that in Japanese. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So like that makes sense to me. Like if you played it in a language where the slang 
and everything like what Hop is doing makes sense, then yeah, he's gonna be a great character. But if you if you play him in English, in in American English, and then you try to sit there and understand what in the hell some of his slang means, you're just gonna be lost. Yeah, because I, I understood. Because let's face it, at the end of the day. I'm at best an Anglophile and at worst a linguist. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, I I got it because I, I'm going to get that. But, you know, not everyone's going to. And to expect that from children is kind of dumb. Yeah. And, uh, but this what... is the kind of complaints about Pokemon that I'm willing to hear versus the, oh my god, the animation is just so terrible. And I'm like, uh, do you remember Gen 1? Because I do. <laughs> yeah, uh, and like I'm sorry. As much as I love a good pixel sprite, you're never gonna sell me on the fact that oh, the animation's so terrible when it's improved so much. <laughs> it really has, and like I can understand that some people are like, uh, a lot of people are comparing it to freaking Breath of the Wild, and it's just like I was just gonna say that their their biggest complaint is oh, it's not Breath of the Wild. I'm like, no fucking shit. Yeah, Pokemon's never been on the level of Zelda. It's always been different. Why? Because they're different fucking games. Yeah. With different fucking purposes. Yeah. Pokemon is a game designed by an autistic man, essentially for autistic people. If you think about it, really, in the classic Pokemon games, you cannot convince me in any way, shape, or form that it was not designed for an autistic person. Because the entire goal of the game is to collect an ungodly amount of these monsters. Right? Yeah. Who does that? Who is notorious for collecting things? I'll give you one hint, and it's not the neurotypicals. <laughs> <sighs> nope. Uh. It's definitely all the autists out here. And we, you know, and then, like, if you really look at little details and things, it's really funny because you'll start to realize that you, you'll start to realize, which is really humorous, I think, the little things. Like, um, Eye contact is a threat. <laughs> I mean, oh my I gosh! Know. Yeah, now thinking about it, like holy eye shit. Eye contact is not just it's eye contact is not just a way to get someone's attention or a social thing. It's a goddamn threat. Like if you make eye contact with a trainer, you're gonna fight. The end. You're gonna fight. Like, yeah. Like oh my gosh, I never really thought about it like that. But holy crap! Also, think you're about right. it. Just think about it. Think about the other details. Right. Your entire journey is done alone. You have a rival, your rival exists, and you talk to them sometimes, but you're not traveling with anybody. You're, you're on your own on a bicycle for like 85% of the game. Yeah. And <laughs> not only are you alone, but you're alone with what? Your partner, who is what? An animal. What the fuck? <laughs> no fucking wonder Pokemon is such an, uh, uh, why we love Pokemon so much. Oh my gosh. Herman. Why did we never think about this? Why did I... Well, oh, more I accurately, why did I never think time. about this? Holy cow. Yeah, it's wild, right? Super. When you actually give it some thought and you're like, oh. <laughs> oh, heck. But especially knowing that Satoshi Tajiri is autistic. Yeah. It was like... It was just sitting there going, uh... Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It makes way too much once, sense. What the frell? Once you have the basis that Satoshi Tajiri is autistic, and you can sit there and be like, okay, I can see why he designed the game that way. And then you look at it, and you're like, from the point of view of an autistic person, you're like, oh, he totally designed this for other autistics. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, why is this so funny? <laughs> oh my gosh. Are you still there? Yep. Okay, cool. I just thought I lost you for a sec. That is insanity to think about. It is. <clears throat> and then think about also, if you want to delve real deep into it, think about the nature of the games, right? Uh, before Scarlet and Violet, there was only one path you could follow. You didn't have choices. You didn't have options. You didn't have... Um, you didn't have the, the stress of making decisions that you didn't know... <laughs> You know, think about it. When we first got Scarlet and Violet, there were so many decisions. We were like, where do we go first? What's the place well, you know, what's the place that's leveled to my approximate understanding? And like, how do I do that? In the original games, none of that. Yeah. You couldn't go somewhere that you were out-leveled. So there was no anxiety involved 
in the idea that, oh, I might walk into something where I, I'm not prepared. Yeah. Whereas, like, in things like Breath of the Wild, you can walk into it and see a moblin, and that moblin's gonna fuck you up if you're not prepared. Yeah. But Whereas that's also Pokemon, another thing to think you're about. You're not gonna run into it. That's also another thing to run think about, Pokemon. though, is, like, you know what I... F uh, one of the first things I did once I got uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is, um, especially after I was like, oh... These guys are not level. Uh, these guys do not level up with you or whatever. I was like, nope. okay. Uh, with that out of the way, I need a, uh, to know what the level is, and I that was like the only thing that I re uh, that I researched about the game before uh, afterwards is okay. What do I? Uh, what is the order that you're supposed uh, that they expect you to do this stuff in? Exactly, and luckily. <laughs> I ended up getting the game about a week after it came out, and by that time, they had already put through some walkthroughs on Polygon and IGN and things like that. And so it wasn't like it was inconceivable for me to find a, a, an order of operations. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wasn't the easiest thing to find. You had to really search for it and things like that. And yep. <clears throat> It's so interesting. It really is. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. that That is just... That's actually insane to think about, though. It is. Uh, it, Pokemon is so interesting, and I think it's become so ingrained in culture that it's kind of we kind of take for granted that it was it was theoretically designed for neurodivergence, the people that a lot of people end up hating and bullying for liking things like Pokemon. Yeah. Well, how can you hate on them for liking it? It was designed for them, you know. <laughs> oh my gosh, that. That is just funny as heck that it was, it was basically, yeah, it was designed for us. And then on top oh. of that, with that as well, is just like, obviously you became, uh, you would learn about all these things. And then, uh, uh, obviously your rival at that time, it really was somebody who was kind of a jackass. People who, uh, obviously were being, uh, uh, it, it kind of represented the person who's like, how dare you like Pokemon? Exactly. But it, it represented, it maybe not necessarily directly, but it represented the person who sits there and makes fun of you for liking things that are weird. Yeah. <laughs> Even though they also like the thing, they're going to make fun of you for, why do you do it like that? Or I don't do it like that, and da 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 da. Yeah. All right, come here. That is... All the way over here, I gotta unflip you. <laughs> oh, that! Wow. I'll take you out again before I go to bed. But if you crap on the floor, we're gonna have problems. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, Pokemon. Problems. Pokemon is truly the game for us. Let's there just. Are it is. It. It is the game, and I don't know. I think, and I think that that hasn't stopped. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think that all of a sudden, just because we have an open world game and it's, you know, it's different and whatever, I don't think it's changed that it's, that, oh man, it's going to be harder for neurodivergence now. I think that they've adapted it for neurodivergence who now, so 1996, Pokemon comes out, neurodivergence, they haven't really had a lot of access to video games because at the time, video games were really based on reflexes fine motor skills, things that neurodivergents typically struggle with. Yeah. And so, especially autistic people. ADHD people have it a little bit different where, you know, they, they can really get into that, that high movement, high motion, large, very active game where that can be really overstimulating for autistic people. And so autistic people didn't really, you know, they, they didn't have a game that was designed for them. Like, yes, a lot of autistic people played video games. Now, I'm never going to say that's not a thing because we've always been into computers. Yeah. But <clears throat> they did suddenly in 1996 have this game that was like, okay, no, this is designed to be easier on you. And a lot of people didn't like it. And a lot of people were like, ah, this is dumb. But it wasn't for them. Yeah. And so... I mean, to be like fair, though, at, at that point, there, uh, um, most games that were RPGs and stuff at that time were turn-based games. So Yeah. And if you think about it that way, turn-based games like that can be really hard for autistic people because we don't always know when it's our turn to speak. We don't always know when it's our turn 
to do things. We don't always know, we can't always read the social cues that come in. Even in those games, it can be really hard to understand, you know, if I respond, even if I respond, um, say there's, say you're having dialogue and one of the dialogues, it asks you a question and you have three options for the answer. If you answer honestly, sometimes it's going to come across rude and that's going to have detrimental effects. Yeah. And in our minds, it's it's okay, but it's but I was honest, and so that's like that's hard to 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 understand. And those games, they, and that makes us one not want to play the games. And so they they run into this RPG where whoa, all of a sudden, not only is it single player, and I don't need anybody else, um, but there's also really clear goals, really clear expectations of what's going on and what I'm supposed to do. There is. Um, no chance of me making any mistakes. It's practically errorless learning. You really can't. You really can't make a detrimental mistake um, at any point because even your Pokemon, even if they get beaten, you know you're you're not. They don't. They don't die. So you just yeah. heal them up and you try again. Like it, there is no risk in this game. Yeah, and I and think so, that, that that that's part of the reason why. Uh, uh, I think it's kind of funny though because like with that as well is that people have tried adding a lot more um, challenge to the game with, like, Nuzlocks and stuff like that. And then it's, like, when it comes to, like, us, it's, like, we don't want to do Nuzlocks. Like, fuck that. Exactly. I'll do... I will sometimes, you know, um, especially in Scarlet and Violet. Scarlet and Violet is really the only place that I've ever made myself a challenge for certain things um, because I already had the freedom to do what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I liked the other games, but the other games were straightforward. I knew what was happening. I liked what was going on. I understood, and it made sense. And so there was no, there was no like, there was no desire to do Nuzlocke and things like that because the game already made sense the way it was. Yeah. And then, so what I'm getting at at this point is that not that Scarlet and Violet ended the era that Pokemon was designed for autistic people or neurodivergent people. It instead it caters to a version of neurodivergence that has grown up with games like Breath of the Wild or um, other open-world games, and so they understand how that works, and they understand that with, you know, a, qu a quick Google search, you're going to have that same, okay, this, this gym is this level, this gym is this level, this gym is... and so on and so forth, and there's no... There doesn't have to be a lot of unknowns with a swift Google search. Yeah. And so it gives a lot more freedom to uh, do as you want, but still retaining the general idea of, okay, I'm collecting, I'm doing this, I have these goals, these goals are clear. And it removed the idea that you automatically, as soon as you make eye contact with someone, have to battle them. Yeah. Which I think is important, too, because that kind of shock and surprise can be really stressful too. So now the fact that you walk up to someone and initiate a battle, that's way more important because there's still the eye contact is still the thing, but you have to initiate the eye contact. It's not just something that happens to you. Yeah. And I think that's actually a really important thing for autistic people. Yeah. Speaking of which, did you ever play, um, or did you hear about the whole thing in, um, fricking, what was it? Uh, the, uh, there was a phone game. I'm forgetting which one it was. Um, one of the Pokemon phone games, where basically they said, um, "You uh, you can't force somebody to battle you." Yeah, I don't remember. I I don't remember what exactly it was called, but that was some uh, that was definitely a thing that uh, um a lot of people were talking about that, and they were like, "Really?" <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. You want to say that to my face again? Because obviously, yeah, all of us had been dealing with that for years. <laughs> so, yeah, I. I don't know. <laughs> I also think that that you know you have to decide what kind of game you're gonna play, and if you're gonna complain about Pokemon being the way Pokemon is, then you're part of the problem. Fair enough. I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting. It, it, there's a lot of really interesting nuance with all of this, for sure. Agreed. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, um, 
uh, Percy Jackson. Speaking of neurodivergent. <laughs> Percy Jackson. Oh, it's going to be so much fun to see that coming out again. Oh, I, I'm, I'm really excited, actually. Just Interesting. But yeah. I'm excited to see what they do with Pokemon Gen 10. Fair enough. But yeah. Oh. Yeah, now I'm th now I'm thinking about Percy Jackson again though. <laughs> Percy Jackson, yep. Oh my gosh. I, I would love You remember do you remember the era when like every movie that came out got a video game? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like when The Incredibles came out, so did The Incredibles video game. Like, a month and a half later, boom, video game. You know what I okay, think is I'm funny, not, though, about I'm that? Is that I some of them that. are actually really good. <laughs> well, and they, they often were quite good. And I'm not saying I want every movie to have a video game or something like that. I don't want that. But to have a Percy Jackson video game, can you imagine? Okay, just imagine with me. Just travel with me in your brain for a second here. And, and just imagine this, because I'm going to lay something out for you, and I think you're going to love it, all right? A Percy Jackson game, right? You wake up, your character starts, and they are, um, you know, you've, you've gone through the character development scene, right? The character develop, or the character picking kind of situation where you pick what your character looks like and, you know, all that. And you can pick, are they from the Romans or are they from the Greeks, Okay. And then uh, you can you can pick those. Ideally, I and I really I foresee it being more your Greek, regardless, and maybe the Romans come into play later. But you know, you could pick theoretically. Yeah. And so you you'd wake up uh, wherever. Say you're at a school, and you meet your friend, and your friend is somewhat like Grover, where because the idea was that Grover was not the only satyr who was sent. Uh, to monitor schools, he was just the only one we knew, right? So that was the idea: is that he wasn't the only one doing that. He was just the only one starring in the in the in the books. And so, you you wake up and your friend is a satyr, but you don't know that. Uh, and you kind of have the same awakening kind of idea that Percy does, where he he stumbles upon Grover talking to um, Chiron, and. Um, he, that's how he finds out that something's something's not, you know, a, as it seems. And go from there with that. And then, you're not Percy Jackson, obviously. You're not Percy, but you do meet Percy, maybe. That would um, be maybe interesting. Your, like, maybe I'm... Percy is where you get your quest. Or maybe Percy is, and he, maybe he's the one giving you the tour of the camp and telling you the whole process of, this is how people get, this is how we get claimed, this is how whatever, and such and such and so forth. And, and um... Uh, you know, you meet Percy, but you're not Percy, and then, you know, you go on a quest, and your quest is something Greek, you know? Yeah. Oh, man, you're, you're making me want it to be something like, uh, like what they did with Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, yes, I mean, just like that, except not anti-Semitic. You know what I'm talking about? Like, just yeah. good. Yeah, that would be really interesting if they, if they actually did go in that direction. I don't see them doing it anytime soon, though, is one thing. Because, honestly, vi uh, games ba uh, or yeah, games based off of movies or games based off of books or whatever have been a lot less common, and especially like uh, with Harry po uh, with uh, Percy Jackson specifically, I can't really see them doing anything beyond um, maybe the uh, the whole you get to play to together or something like that. Yeah. It would be kind of neat if we had the kind of situation going on that we do with Pokemon, where you can play the whole game single player, but there's also, like, maybe one special quest, or yeah. things you can do on quests that are perks to playing multiplayer. And so your characters then, you know, maybe maybe there's a there's a special quest where there's a special prophecy that says, you know, so on and so forth. Or maybe they there's the maybe there's the prophecy even that says the seven half bloods will answer the call, and you're at, interacting with that prophecy, but you're playing with you can play those seven can be comprised of either your friends that you bring in as multiplayer, or as NPCs. Hmm. That could be interesting. 
you know what I'm saying? Like there was there was very often in those in those uh, prophecies a specified number of things, whether yeah. it be people saving the day or members of the team or et cetera. There was there was usually a specific number. And so theoretically they could make it so that you could fill those party spots with your friends and play multiplayer. Or you could play them as NPCs and do it yourself. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I think that, that that could absolutely be an interesting way to do it. Um, I think the biggest problem with... Uh, honestly, I don't see a new... Uh, I can't imagine... Uh, at this point in time, I'm not imagining as much... Well, video games in general, uh, based off of especially movies. Because it's just... Yeah. It's not as popular anymore. Like, sure, it still it's happens. <clears throat> but they're mostly for little kids, if you notice. Yeah. Like, obviously, there is the, um... There was the Miraculous game. There was, um... Uh, the Bluey game. There was frickin', um... There is the new Avatar game, which is also fucking made by the same people who made, um, the Miraculous game. But, um, I don't know, there, uh, like, especially things that would be more for teenagers, it's a lot less. Like, obviously, um, Miraculous is kind of in a weird situation anyways, but, I don't know. I, I hate the Miraculous game, it's so bad. It's not great. I've only seen, like, gameplay of it, and I would just sit there like, ah! Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. This is not awesome. <laughs> no. And I've made my review on it. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna rip it a new another new one. Um, yeah. I've already ripped it a new one. I don't need to do it again. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, we don't need to rehash it. It's it's kind of like the Bluey game. Have yeah. you have you seen any reviews of the Bluey game? Oh my fuck. Yeah, I mean, uh, no, I saw freaking. And that game is so bad. I've actually heard that uh, um freaking uh. What's his name? Uh, Foot of a Ferret actually liked it. Did he really? Apparently. Oh my gosh. I, I mean, the first review I saw of it was just telling parents, don't waste your money. Like... <laughs> yeah. And, and that, shit is, that shit is wild to me. That, that, that they can just... Yeah. Like... Yeah. I know it's for little kids, and so I know that it's not gonna be a, you know, a fantabulous game, but damn, like, just to say to parents, don't waste your money, that's crazy. Yeah. And How bad does a game have to be that it's not even worth giving to a three-year-old, you know what I mean? Like, dang. You know, uh, Cause speaking... Because who is Bluey made for, right? What is the age limit, or the age demographic that Bluey is really geared toward? Yes, I know that its, it's main watchers right now, especially in the United States, are 20-somethings. I get that, but, like... <laughs> this is the demographic that Bluey was designed for, right? It's, yeah. It's kids. It's, it's little, little kids. It's like, you know, like two to five, really. And so <laughs> I know the game's not going to be great, but how bad does it have to be for that to be the first review? Like, fuck. Yeah. Um. Oh, it's so freaking weird. Um. So I have... Uh, so pretty much all of my comments on my video t uh, discussing... Um, uh, the miraculous game as just an example all of them are just like uh, uh talking about okay i'm glad that you um that you talked about a lot of this stuff um and uh, basically like it stopped me from um uh, it, it stopped uh, it, luckily i think it stopped a lot of people um from playing the game and um let's see here like just from uh, for an example Honestly, you gave really good criticism on the game. I think I will. Uh, this will teach Jeremy Zag and other developers that made this game. The game looks uh, pretty uh, pretty bad, honestly. And there are way better games out there that are not that expensive, look good, and fun to play. And um, I'll, also, I um, I've had other people comment on it, and it's like, oh yeah, I I was actually like really looking. Uh, I. I would really liked it, and then um, other people. Uh, after I finished break, uh, breaking it down, I talked about like what I would actually want from a miraculous game. And one of the things, yeah. uh, there were two things that I said. One was a fighter game that was basically taking inspiration from the game uh, Gamer Two Point Oh, as well uh, as perhaps um, doing a 
Insomniac game, uh, well, basically like Spider-Man, where you, uh, but also more in line with being able to change between Ladybug and Marinette, or Cat Noir and uh, Adrian, because the thing about Miraculous is that a lot more than like Peter, uh, than um, Spider-Man is that it's a story about the people. It's not just the superheroes. So, yeah. Yeah. I honestly, and maybe I'm maybe I'm weird about this, but I actually kind of enjoy slice of life games. Yeah. Where, you know, like the whole action isn't always going on. So, like, if we had a miraculous game where part of the game was to attend school, I would be okay with that. Like, <laughs> you know, like if, and I'm not saying like the whole game you're sitting in a desk doing whatever. But if part of the game is you're at school and part of the quest is sitting in your desk and then um, because you're sitting there, something happens and, you know, X, Y, and Z. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like... Yeah. Or or if little quests, like um, little quests that turn bigger. I don't know. Marinette has to... Uh, her dad runs out of something for the bakery and she has to go and fetch it. An oh shit! Along the way, there's a supervillain. Gotta go fix that. And yeah. she comes back, and by the time she gets back, her dad's like, "Bro, where the fuck is this thing that we ordered?" <laughs> like, you know, like, and yeah. she's like, "Oh crap!" And then you have to scoot her through the city and go find it or whatever. You know, something fun like that. Like, it's not. I don't feel like it's rocket science to have a game that's fun. Yeah, and I think like one of the things that would be really interesting if they did miraculous is. Have it be during the time of, uh, basically after the most recent season. Um, I'm not going to go into too many spoilers, but basically at that point, um, there are a lot of superheroes. Basically, the uh, her entire, uh, everyone who has gotten a Miraculous up to that point now has their Miraculous full time. So, like, maybe it's like something like you're out doing your adventures and then, set, uh, and, um, You'll just happen to run into like one of your allies and help them out, uh, and they'll help you out or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, uh, uh, I'm I'm mostly thinking about like the uh, uh, pretty much every single time that I think about a miraculous game. If I want to see a miraculous game, I keep looking to the new Spider-Man game. Uh, uh, like when I first came up with my first idea of what I wanted for a miraculous game is I wanted it to be like Spider-Man PS4. And then once that uh, and then now after the events of season 5 and Spider-Man 2 coming out, I want to see a game like Spider-Man 2. I see that uh, like if it's going to be something that is taking place after the current events, uh, after season 5, then I want it to be very much like Spider-Man 2. But also, I could see it, uh, I could see them doing a lot of different things with it. Um, but also, I'm thinking uh, along the same lines of maybe it should be an alternate universe because they are already starting to toy with the alternate universe thing in the story. So yeah, I, I don't know. There's a lot with that, and I'm kind of intrigued to see what they're going to continue to do because the I haven't played much of the Spider-Man games. I think I've only played like five minutes of it on Cody's PS5 or PS4. Four, and that would make it the original Spider-Man, wouldn't it? But yeah. um, I is it connected to the Spider Verse, or is it something different? So it's in the same. It it, it is in Spider Verse. It is connected to okay. the Spider Verse, but it is not in any of the main universes that we deal with. Gotcha. Okay, so into so what I'm gathering into the Spider Verse, there's a bunch of different Spider Men. And that's why, you know, everyone was in that movie, Toby, yeah. Andrew, and um, Tom. But, yeah, I don't know. So the game is the game is a separate universe from that, but it's still in the Spider-Verse. So yeah. you're not playing as... So you're not playing as any known, like, you're not playing as Miles Morales, or you're not playing as... Well, you are Peter playing Parker. as a Peter Parker and a, uh, and a Miles Morales, but it is not the ones that are, connect, uh, that are in the any of the movies at this point. Well, correction. Oh, weird. Um, Peter, uh, the Peter Parker was actually in, um, Spider-Verse, the most recent Spider-Verse. Okay. 
what's the new what's the newest movie that just came out it's uh, uh across the spider-verse part one across the spider-verse yeah so yeah he is in that briefly but he's not like but also like what we have sounds like it's a prequel to whatever is going on there um uh, because uh there is a quest there's a side quest where you have to um collect spider bots and they come from across the spider verse and that's basically how your characters meet um miguel and join the uh and uh, uh like mu uh, probably much later they join the group of spider-men interesting um i don't know exact details yet um because i haven't played enough of it but that's that's my current theory and i'm sticking to it all right i can dig i can dig it um so but also with that also to think about is that the current spider-verse movies are basically saying that every single universe is connected i mean yeah that makes sense every marvel universe is connected all of the cartoons the live action stuff it's all connected because, like, there's a line from Miguel where he basically um, talks about the events of the Spider-Man, uh, um, the most recent Spider-Man live-action movie. And it was in the trailer, so that's not much of a spoiler. Yeah. So, and the, it, it, we now know what the um, what universe that is. Um, I don't, th I don't know the exact number off the top of my head because it's like. Um, nineteen nine 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 or something like that. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so it's it's there. <laughs> we know it's there, <laughs> but beyond that, we don't know much. So I don't know. There's just some things to think about, and we'll see where things go. Um, but yeah, we've got a lot of stuff coming over the next few months and weeks and stuff. So let's get prepared, um, because. The holidays are coming, and it's going to be chaos. <laughs> oh, boy. Yep, it sure is. It sure is. But anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please make sure to leave a like, leave your thoughts and theories down in the comments below, and we will see you guys next time. But on...